So today I have my husband with me. Come and on. We are going to be sharing a testimony of a healing, well, multiple healings that the Lord did on Christmas Day of 2018. This is really incredible. Um, this is a topic that I have uh, heard of the Lord healing and working in these ways through other believers, but I hadn't experienced healing from prayer um, firsthand in my life. So this was really uh, almost a milestone, I would say, in my relationship with God. And I know that my husband could say the same. So we're really excited to share this with you guys. Um, I'm going to preface with the timeline. So a week before Christmas, the weekend before, so we were in our living room and we were listening to upper room worship and my husband got a vision from the Lord. So I'm going to let him share on that. Thanks, babe. So just as a quick aside for us personally, as a couple, we had really felt for the past, for the previous three or four months prior to December of 2018, the Lord had really been impressing upon us to really begin to cultivate more intimacy, deeper intimacy with Him. And that can be done in a variety of ways, but for me personally, the best example that I've seen is Jesus, of course. And one thing that He says is, in Matthew, He says to go into the secret place, so, and to close the door. So we had been spending a lot of time in intimacy with the Father, really just seeking Him out, really trying to listen and be present with Him, free of all distractions. So. We're sitting in the living room, and leading up to these events, the presence of God was just incredibly thick. There's really no other way to describe it. Um, we all have peaks and valleys, I think, when we talk with Jesus and when we have this relationship with Jesus. There are times we feel like we're in these mountaintops, and there's other times we feel, you know, like we're in these valleys. You know, these these incredible feelings that we're feeling, you know, aren't present all the time. You know, but that but that's part of the walk with him. But that being said, this was definitely a peak season. Um, there were many times where we would just begin praying and I would just weep because I felt Holy Spirit's presence. I felt the presence of Jesus on earth so in, incredibly intense that I was just overwhelmed by his grace, but overwhelmed by his majesty. So I would just begin to weep in his presence. Um, and so that was happening quite frequently. Every time that I went to spend some time with Jesus, I was crying profusely. And it wasn't a sadness. It was a really just a joy and a reverence and an awe of how amazing our Father is. So we're worshiping in our living room. Um, I'm on my knees. My wife is on her knees. And I get a vision from the Lord, and it's quite clear and quite distinct and quite detailed. Um, he shows me a picture of Brittany and I sitting in the assisted living um, facility of my grandmother praying over people. Now, as he shows me this vision, he begins speaking to me, and he said, quite simply, I want you to usher me in, usher in my presence and I'm going to do the rest. And in that vision, it was very clear that we were laying our hands on individuals and praying over them in Jesus' name, and they were being healed. Now, that was about the entirety of the vision. And I didn't really know how to go about explaining that to my wife because I knew that I knew that I knew specifically that he was calling us to do that on Christmas. I felt him tell me that specifically. And I was trying to find a good time to tell my wife, and I ended up telling her shortly after the song that we were listening to had ended. So I told her the vision, and I'm going to let her kind of explain her reaction. So um, we're in this intimate time of worship, and so I, as soon as he tells me um, what the Lord told him about us going to the assisted living home and praying over these people on Christmas morning, my first thought was, oh man, I really wanted to sleep in on Christmas morning and man, does it have to be on Christmas? So uh, that was my first thought, but immediately I knew when he told me that, that it was God. So I mean, who am I to say no to what the Lord is asking of us? He's been so gracious and incredible and in taking care of us. Um, and so 
I quickly uh, told him that we were going to do it. And um, I really, there's just this expect, uh, expectancy whenever the Lord gives you a vision or is asking something of you. I feel when you know it's Him, you have this peace and expectancy and it's like you're just waiting for what God's going to do next. And I think that's kind of the heart that we had going into this. Um, like, Lord, like we're here, we're being obedient and this is literally you. So, mm, and that's, that's, that's literally what he told David too. So, um, then we ended up going and do you want to tell them about inviting Mike and everything? Yeah, absolutely. And I think you summarized it perfectly, babe, is that sometimes in life, when we get a vision from the Lord, we kind of want all the pieces to be there and for it to make sense very clearly. But that's one of the things that her and I have encountered time and time again is that when we step out in faith and there's that assuredness and we've connected with each other who are both hearing from God as a confirmation as well as others, we don't have to have all the pieces in place, y'all. You just sometimes just got to step out and got to trust that he's going to take care of it um, in that regard. So one of our close friends, Mike, I ended up calling him on the phone and he was experiencing a very similar peak season. So much so that when we would begin talking about Jesus, Holy Spirit would literally, def it, it, he would descend over the phone and Mike would begin quaking. He would literally begin shaking in the spirit. Stuff that I've heard about, but again, nothing that I've ever experienced. So that was really, really intense and incredible. So that had been happening for months previously in, in the exact same time that we're talking about here. So I call him on the phone and I tell him, I'm like, hey man, I got this vision from God. We're supposed to go and pray over people. Do you want to come with us? And he's like, absolutely. And as I'm talking to him about the vision, I feel that same tangible presence of the Holy Spirit descend over the phone as I'm talking with him. I'm eating quiche uh, that weekend with my wife and I just start bawling. And then the Lord gives me another vision and he starts speaking as he shows me this particular vision. And he showed my wife and I, as well as Mike, riding on the crest of what looked like a tsunami wave in the desert. Now, if you go into Isaiah and you really dig into that, there are, talk of, they, there are prophecies about streams in the desert, and that's what the Lord's going to do in our life. But specifically, he showed us on this tsunami wave riding into Tucson, Arizona, and he said specifically that we were on the crest of a wave and that that wave was going to crash down on the day that we celebrate his birth, on December 25th, and something was gonna be born and originate on that day. And I was telling this to Mike over the phone as I'm receiving it, I'm bawling, my wife's listening to it, she's worked up, she's hearing it, Mike is over the phone, undone, really. Um, but that was specific, that we were riding on the crest of a wave, and the Lord ended up uh, clarifying that even further and saying it was a wave of revival that was going to inundate and flood all of Tucson, and it was going to hit on the day that we celebrate his birth, on December um, 25th. So, we woke up that morning, we got in the car, and we were going to meet Mike over at the assisted living facility, and on the way over, my wife also received a vision. <laughs> So we were in the car and we were praying before we went in to start praying for everyone and um, I had previously uh, watched a documentary on Netflix called Holy Spirit. If you have not heard of it, I would highly encourage you to go watch it. Yes. It's incredibly powerful. Uh, but essentially in this documentary, um, there are sons of God and they go and they follow what the Holy Spirit is telling them to do essentially. Um, Todd White is in it. If What's up Todd White? If you're familiar with him. Um, so there is a part in this documentary where they're in um, an area of Africa and they're praying over a witch doctor and she is crippled to a wheelchair and she's also blind and in the documentary they pray over her she receives healing and can now see and she stands up out of her wheelchair and begins to walk on her own um so and accepts jesus yes so the lord frequently speaks to me in pictures uh visions pictures 
And so when we're sitting in the car praying before we go in, he, the Holy Spirit quickened that to my heart. And I just knew immediately that he, he was telling me that we were going to go into that home and pray for people and that we would see someone stand up out of their wheelchair and walk. And so I shared that with my husband and then Mike arrived and we are walking up to the front door and Maria, um, she is standing at the front door of the assisted living home. And Maria is the caregiver there. Um, she has helpers, but she owns the facility and she has been with all of these uh, people that live in this home for years and years, some of them 12 plus years, she's been with them. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Her name's Martha. It's okay. <laughs> um, so we share with Martha what the Holy Spirit told me, and she also shared with us that she had uh, recently experienced um, the Lord move in this home where she had prayed over a man with cancer and he had been healed from that and um, so we're just going into this so expectant and just ready for what God wants to do and um, I think I'm gonna give it back to my husband Perfect. <laughs> yeah so Britt receives that vision and I want to tell you really is that we're not by any means seasoned healers. I don't want you guys again, I, I want to reinforce that idea is because we've always uh, heard of healings and we've seen individuals healed in Jesus name, but we've never been the leaders in said healings. Yeah. So we're getting these visions from God and we're hearing these things that he's going to heal people. He's going to utilize us as his tools. And I'm telling you guys again, that can be very off-putting, especially if you've never experienced that firsthand. Kind of like, but we just have to be obedient. The Lord can do greater things than we can ever imagine with an obedient tool. And you hear about that analogy all the time is remaining wet in the hands of the potter. If you allow the Lord and you follow his footsteps and the guiding promptings of the Holy Spirit, you will be so rocked by what the Lord is willing to utilize you for at any given time anywhere with anyone so it's amazing so can I insert yeah. really quick I do want to kind of preface so the Holy Spirit did give me that picture before when we were praying before we went in but as soon as we got in to the assisted living home and, and started praying um, I felt the presence of God but I also felt very attacked at the same time so through that, throughout that whole thing, it was not like I was on the spiritual high the whole time. Like I was really having to do spiritual warfare at the same time that we were really praying over people. But all that I really needed to ultimately know is that God was here. We were being obedient and just put my faith and my trust in him. So it wasn't this thing where, oh, I'm just feeling so spiritual and <laughs> because of my holiness, you know, the Lord's doing this. It's not about that at all. We were being obedient and he's not going to withhold himself from his children because yes, of us. So good. So um, I just kind of wanted to share my mindset and where I was at during um, our prayer time. So. And I think I was kind of on the opposite of the spectrum. I was so concentrated on what was going to happen that I just was in this zone where I'm kind of like, all right, Lord, I'm going to pray in your name and let your will be done. So it's really interesting how, you know, the Lord takes individuals together and really helps them create, you know, a unique, beautiful balance in all of that. So we all walk in and the Lord had kind of been speaking earlier over the course of, you know, the previous months that we had heard in church and in sermons and the Lord had spoken to me individually and saying, you know, that revival really is going to start at the familial level. And so we had heard that a couple times and I'm kind of like, okay, that's great, you know, but not really understanding what that meant. But we walk in with our Bluetooth speaker into my grandmother's room <laughs> and it's just her. So we turn on Upper Room, shout out Upper Room, you're incredible. The presence of God is so <laughs> manifest in every single one of your services. Thank you for all that you do. 
Um, but that being said, as we turn on upper room on our Bluetooth speaker, and immediately, guys, the presence becomes so palpable in the room. It was thick. It was just like you could feel such an incredible presence, this amazing, peaceful feeling all over the entire room. And so we're all just worshiping really quickly, just worshiping, just instantly just get into this deep, intimate worship, and we're praising Jesus. And my grandma is a spiritual warrior. My grandma smuggled um, Bibles into China. She, she has been on the front lines for Jesus for a long, long time. But she has been riddled by ailments a majority of her life. She's been on supplements. She's had a multitude of surgeries. So much so is that she's had so many hip surgeries and issues with her knee is that her left leg was documented for over the past 10 years to be two inches shorter after all of her surgeries than her right. Which as you know, with that imbalance causes a lot of issues in the back as well as the hip, a lot of chronic pain, which she was on a lot of medication for. So, and my grandmother is also wheelchair bound. I've seen my grandmother for 10 years struggle to even stand out of a wheelchair, let alone stand up and walk without, you know, braces and a cane and a walker. So. All that being said is that this is not something that was impersonal to me as far as the people that we were praying for. This is someone who I've known intimately and I've seen struggle and I know she loves Jesus. And so I felt the Lord prompt us to begin to pray over grandma that she would stand out of her wheelchair. So we're praying over her and I felt the Lord tell me to tell her to stand up. So we're praying over it. just really simple prayers, guys. It's not like these intricate, you know, really detailed. It's just allowing the Holy Spirit to speak. So I'm just in Jesus' name, back be healed and stand up. So then I lift her up in between uh, her armpits. I pick her up as Brittany's praying over her, as Mike is praying over her. And she gets out of her wheelchair and she's standing. And I'm really not helping her stand. So we're like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And then I just prompting the Holy Spirit, I said, in Jesus' name, back, be straightened. And all of a sudden, she goes, pop! And she just, her back straightens immediately. Now, it's blowing my mind as this is transpiring because I know my grandma. She's been hunched for so many years. And so then she starts saying, oh my gosh, and she's praising the Lord while all this is happening. Needless to say, she ends up sitting back down and then Mike, again, this is why it's so amazing to have individuals that are around you that are obedient, that are listening to the promptings, because sometimes you hear and sometimes you don't. So I'm like, okay, what next, Lord? And Mike ends up hearing from Holy Spirit that we have to pray over her legs. So I'm sitting here, guys, again, raised in a Pentecostal church. You guys have heard my story. I've heard about miracle happenings. I've seen it, but I've never witnessed it firsthand. So I grab my mother, I, I grab my grandmother's hands, I grab her right leg, Mike grabs her left, and we're both holding them. Britt is sitting on the opposite side, watching the legs and praying over her. So we just start praying for a very simple prayer, and we just command that left leg in Jesus' name, guys, to grow out in Jesus' name. I know it sounds completely wild, but I want my wife to describe what happened next. You talk about so the brackets. So I am opposite of Dave and Mike, and I'm at the side of Grandma Sherry. I have my hands on her, and I'm praying over her as they're holding her feet. And I'm like just kind of mentally preparing myself because I just have this sense of like I know that something crazy is about to happen. And the Lord's about to do something really incredible. And so we're praying and I have no idea why my husband closes his eyes because <laughs> if we're about to pray for someone's leg to grow up, like why are you going to close your eyes? <laughs> so <laughs> Grandma Sherry has leg braces on and so there's two bolts and, um, hi Cameron, hi, this is our dog Cameron. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Grandma Sherry has these there's two bolts there's like a space on her on her leg where her braces are and you can see by the bottom bolts on her braces that there is in fact a two inch gap there there's a very visible gap and we begin praying over grandma sherry and that gap 
closes. Like, I'm literally standing here watching Grandma Sherry's leg grow out. Mike starts screaming, yeah, like, Mike's oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and I'm just like, yeah. oh my gosh, and I Dave opens eyes. his eyes. <laughs> I finally opened my eyes, right? I finally opened my eyes, and my grandmother's left leg is growing in front of me. Those notches are coming into alignment. Guys, she's had for 10 years documented by several doctors that there's a two inch gap and a discrepancy between those two legs. A month and a half ago, actually, from the time of this video, she went in to have it remeasured. There is now less than a quarter of an inch gap or discrepancy between those two legs. So this is not something that we were just seeing in the moment. This was medically documented that that left leg grew out in my hand. I saw it, I felt it, and then it was later confirmed by our medical um, community. So I'm just, we're blown away and that's how the day starts. That's, that's the first interaction. We're thinking we're gonna be there, you know, for maybe 25 minutes tops. It starts in my grandmother's room with her leg growing out, with her standing and her back straightening. And that's how the day begins. And I do wanna kinda insert here, um, when you pray for healing, we don't know the full will of God. So sometimes it's immediate healing, sometimes it's a progressive thing. But again, we're just going in and being obedient. So while we experienced these miracles with Grandma Sherry, um, which were absolutely incredible, she is still in her wheelchair. She's not walking by herself, but she is progressively, like we're just seeing these incredible things happening in her healing and in her body. And, and that was just the beginning of this work back to full restoration. She's getting stronger and stronger every day. And actually she's been having dreams of her standing and praising Jesus on her own. And, and other people in the yeah, church. Yeah, and other people in her church are walking up to her and saying, I don't know if this means anything to you, but we're seeing visions of you standing and walking on your own. And the Lord told me in that moment, and it's so beautiful that if you're open, that he's just gonna speak directly to that individual. Um, and he actually spoke to me, he said, tell her to pray for continued healing every single day and to believe that it's going to happen, that this is going to be something that's progressive in nature, just like our everyday walk, guys. It's like we come to Jesus and it's like, it's not all solved then. Yes, we're completely free, but then it's about coming to know our father in the way that he knows us. So it's a progressive every single day. I consecrate myself to Jesus, give him everything I have to grow up as Paul says, into Jesus. So that's kind of what happened in that first portion. And then the Lord told us to clean the rest of the house. Basically, to mean to go and to pray over every single person in that home. And that's exactly what we ended up doing. So like my beautiful wife ended up saying, Martha gave us the case history of everyone that we prayed over before we prayed over them. So it was a very great way to be targeted in our prayers. But we saw, for example, an individual that was homeless on the couch. The Lord prompted us to go and pray over her. She had a cancerous swelling, a mass on her actual jawline. We prayed over her, guys. We saw the swelling shrink in front of our eyes. We're not imagining this. It's not just me. It's not just Britt. It's not just Mike. As we started praying for people, my grandmother was wheeling around following us in addition to Martha. And as we began to pray for more people and Jesus began to heal, and prophesy and give words of knowledge over these individuals, there began to stir an excitement in the house. So people started following us around and encouraging other people in the actual home to be prayed for. Is there anything that you want to add? Um, I just think that it's important that Grandma Sherry, after we prayed for her, went in and joined hands with us and yes. began praying with us over yes. each other individual in the home. And I think that was so impactful in terms of unity of generations. Yes. Um, so it was just such a beautiful picture uh, to see the Lord work. And mm. um, that's incredible. It's just, yeah. <laughs> and that actually reminds me, thank you so much for saying that. That actually reminds me is that after my grandmother's leg grew out in my hand as we were praying for her, she ends up telling me something that rocks me. She goes, 10 years ago, now if you guys remember that timeline, I was wayward for 10 years. So in the midst of my waywardness, my grandmother received a vision of me praying over her and her receiving healing. 
Now, she gets that in the midst of when I'm a drug addict and alcoholic. In the midst of that, she sees that. But she said she never doubted it. She just waited for it to happen. And then 10 years later, approximately, I show up with my wife and a friend. And we pray over her and she's healed. It was absolutely incredible, guys. Absolutely incredible. So we're praying over individuals. My wife is receiving words of knowledge over some individuals. So it wasn't all healing. There were individuals that we prayed over for healing. They were healed. Pain was gone. Tumors shrank. Things of that nature. Other things were more emotional in nature. The emotional healing. There were individuals there that were torn up by bitterness and contempt and, yeah. and regret. And my wife ended up receiving several words of knowledge for individuals that even weren't e even in the room. So we made our way through the house, and it was as if the Lord was just building up even more anticipation as we were going. Things were just so incredible. We were just vibing. We were crying the entire time. The presence just never left us. It was so incredibly intense and amazing is how I can best describe it. But he saved Britt's vision for the last individual who we prayed over. We made our way through, from room to room all the way to the back of the house. And at the back of the house was a man by the name of James. And as we were informed by Martha, James has been with Martha for over 12 years. Ever since 12 years ago, James had had a stroke, which left the right-hand side of his body from his toes on his right-hand side up until the tongue, the, that portion of the tongue, so there's a split in the brain, so that would be the left-hand side of his tongue, and the right-hand side of his body below his neck was completely paralyzed. He has not been able to walk in 12 years. He cannot articulate words aside from yes and no. That is the only thing, the only two words that he's able to articulate. So we're sitting there and the Lord very specifically tells us that he wants us to pray over him. So we begin to pray over James and the first prayer was again very short and sweet, just um, I had an opportunity, actually, I'd like to mention, where Martha is such an incredible woman of faith. She was wanting individuals to say the sinner's prayer in the midst of all of this. And that's absolutely incredible. Let's bring as many people to Jesus as possible. But James, on his face, it was very clear from his visage, his face itself, that he was not very comfortable in doing that. So I kind of walked in and the Lord prompted me to ask him if he knew about Jesus. So I said, James, do you know about Jesus? He goes, and he just says yes. And, and he nods his head. And I said, well, the Lord has sent us here today. Jesus actually sent us and gave us a vision that we were to come over here and to pray over everyone in this house. Would it be okay if we prayed over you for healing? And he's kind of looking at me, you know, with this hesitancy. And then Martha chimes in and kind of says, oh, well, James, you got to. And then the Lord immediately prompted me to tell him, it doesn't matter, James, whether or not you believe in me or not, that I'm going to show up and show you that I've never left you nor forsaken you. And I will always be with you. And I'm a real and active God. You've heard of this Jesus, but I'm going to show myself and make myself present to you right now and show you that I am real and that I am ever living and I will always be with you. So I tell that to James and he's looking at me and I said, it doesn't matter whether or not you believe. We believe we were sent here and we know that we're to pray over you. So he ended up allowing us to pray over him. So we pray over him really quickly in Jesus name, just a really short prayer, probably like 30 seconds long. And then the Lord prompts me to ask him if he's feeling anything. And guys, the first words out of his mouth, remember that he can't say anything aside from yes or no. He articulates the word one, and he's pointing at his right arm, and he's saying one, 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 one. And the Lord is interpreting this for me, because I'm like, I don't know what he's saying. The Lord says he's saying that he's having sensation in his right hand, in his right arm. So I asked James, are you having feeling, tingling in your right arm? He goes, yes, yes, yes. And he keeps saying one, 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 and pointing at his arm. So we're all like, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. So we begin to pray over him again. And then I ask him the same question after that prayer. James, are you feeling anything? He just says the same thing. One, one, one. So we're kind of like, okay, God, you know, he's feeling sensation in his right arm. What else is there to do? And so then Mike hears from Holy Spirit and he's prompted to actually, he says, guys, we don't, I heard the Lord say it's already done. And we're looking at James still sitting in the wheelchair. So I'm kind of like, okay, it's already done. 
And he says, we just need to tell James about the love of the Father. So we begin, guys, to really just speak that identity of what it is to be loved by Jesus and how he was uniquely crafted in his mother's womb. And he was, has a very unique plan and purpose that if he partners with Jesus on, that he can fulfill. And it doesn't matter what the world has said about him. It only matters what his father says about him. And all of a sudden, Martha speaks up and steps forward. And I'm going to let Brittany say what she said. <laughs> um, so Martha begins to share with James and she says, this is Brittany, Dave's wife. And before she came into this home, the Lord told her that someone in this home would stand up and walk out of their wheelchair today. And she says, James, that is you in Jesus name, stand up and walk. Oh. And she uh, proceeds to put a leg brace on his leg, the side that he has been paralyzed for 12 years. And um, I'm going to throw it back to you, babe. <laughs> yeah. And guys, uh, in this moment, I don't, uh, words really don't describe what happened. Um, these things are supernatural. So the natural words that we have really don't do a good job of encompassing what happened. But James stood up out of his wheelchair and we actually have video that we took of James walking his way all the way out of the assisted living facility. He stood up out of the wheelchair and he began to move that right hand side. His arm began to have movement, his right arm, his right torso. He began to shrug his shoulder on his right hand side and that right leg kicked out and went ahead of him and the left followed and the right kicked and the left followed. And we're gonna provide you guys with a clip of actually what we saw in, in real time there. So James ends up guys walking all the way down the hall and out the front door of the assisted living facility. And all the meanwhile, all the people that the Lord has prompted us to pray over are gathering in the hallway and they begin to proclaim Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. They begin to thank Jesus for what he's doing because many of these individuals have lived with James for many years and they know what's transpiring is miraculous. And they're seeing James who's been wheelchair bound, who has not been able to move his right hand side for as long as they've known him, walk down this hallway slowly but surely one step at a time and it was as the Lord was strengthening him with every single step that he took then this video is incredible I can't wait for you guys to see it and I'm gonna link that video down in the description box for you guys so that you can watch it and you can see the incredible miracle that God performed or one of them on Christmas so and the only thing that I wanted to add is that James wasn't a believer, guys, so sometimes you hear people say, you know, oh, well, in order for them to be healed, they have to have faith. I believe that Jesus has given us incredible faith, that we can bridge the gap on behalf of those that don't, to demonstrate and manifest the power, as Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the gospel, which God, we believe, personally, after hearing many sermons and investigating ourselves in Scripture, we believe it is God's will to heal. That that healing may come at different times, it may take different forms, but we believe ultimately it's his will to heal and we will always pray for healing, um, regardless of the situation. Because the Lord created both the body and the mind and there is nothing that he cannot overcome. Um, so the last thing I wanted to say is, guys, James was not a believer. And when he sat down, he walked all the way outside and he sat in a chair, he was basking in the Tucson sun. And this smile that spread across his face was almost bewilderment and joy at the same time. He was so, I think, perplexed as to what had just happened, but was so thankful that it did. And James's family, we ended up telling them what happened, and they gave us permission to share this video with you guys. So we're just, we're overjoyed, we're so incredibly enthusiastic, and we're so humbled more than anything else that God would choose us to demonstrate his power and his love for his children. Well, I want to just thank you guys for taking the time to uh, listen to what we have to share and to share this incredible um, testimony of what God did on Christmas. Um, we hope it encouraged you. We hope it empowered you to um, be bold and to trust yes. God and yes. what he is leading you. And um, even if you don't believe in God, if you just happened upon this video, we hope that it still encouraged you. and. Um, that you would pursue 
getting to know Christ in um, where you're at. So thank you guys so much again for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Have Bye. a great one. <laughs>